Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Sincerely KSO. If it is your first time to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, my darlings. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys know I do a variety of reactions. I've got my music channel and I've got my um, movie channel going on and going strong. Um, but I try to keep this channel as, you know, just a free space with no expectations or anything. But I, I just recently decided that there's some documentaries that I've been asked to watch or re and react to. I did a boxing documentary, which was very educational as well. So I think I'm going to be putting up a, cu a couple of documentaries that have been requested. I hope you guys enjoy it because it's, it's some of them are educational. Some of them are <laughs> get you thinking, but I do believe that if I've watched it and it stirs up a thought in my head, I want to share with you guys. So one of those documentaries that was requested recently was racism and the truth behind um, Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger. I hope I'm pr pronouncing her name right. So that's what I see here. Um, the requester says that it's really educational in the light of what's going on now. Um, this is a very delicate topic because I do believe women have the rights to determine what they do with their body. But like everything in this world, it can be misused. It can be abused, right? So there isn't a single, um, let me use Tylenol, for instance. It was created for pain, but if you misuse it, it becomes like abuse. So I think a lot of people might abuse any system that's available. It's not, it's not, it's, it's human. That's what I think. However, I do not agree that the government should patrol a woman's body, that there should be laws passed on how a woman should, you know, what, what happens with her body is like laws passed to what you do in your bedroom. You know what I mean? So you can only educate people and make sure that they take pre, just do your best to make sure that they take preemptive measures. That is my belief. And I am not, I've never had one. I've never had an abortion. And I don't believe that people should just be reckless with it. And you're just having men and women are just, you know, being reckless with their bodies and, you know, they're, they're preemptive preemptive measures taken right but i do believe that that's that's my faith that's my 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 faith at play and also my reasoning but i also believe that you can't police a person's body it, it's a kind of slavery to me but let's see what this documentary is about um first time watching so please subscribe to my channel okay as founder of the American Birth Control League, which later became Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger was no doubt a controversial figure with disturbing views on eugenics, race, and population control. Mm -hmm. While some argue she even wanted to exterminate the black race, others are trying to erase that part of her past. The Mike Stop Wallace it. interview. In the eyes of some, Margaret Sanger has been a heroine. In the eyes of others, she's been a destructive force. In her own words, Sanger pushed for a society that limited births to those she deemed fit to have children. I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents, that have no chance in the world to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mark when they're born. In 1916, okay, Sanger know, opened be... the country's Criminals. first birth control clinic. Stop it. As a member of the American Eugenics Society, she advocated improving the genetic composition of humans through controlled reproduction of different races and classes. She often wrote about the issue in the journal she founded, oh. called the Birth Control Review. Oh, in 1919, it? writing, I personally believe in the sterilization of the feeble-minded, the insane, and the syphilitic. The most urgent problem today is how to limit and discourage the over-fertility of the mentally and physically defective. Many point to a 1923 New York Times interview as proof of Sanger's racist motives, in which she referred to people as weeds, saying, 
It means the release and cultivation of the better racial elements in our society and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extirpation of defective stocks, those human weeds which what? threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. Hayden Ludwig, an investigative researcher, has extensively studied Sanger's life and writing. She talked about the need for race betterment through, through controlling these weeds, basically undesirable people. In 1939, after opening another clinic in Harlem, the birth control activists Harlem. launched the Negro Project, an initiative supported by black leaders, such as civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois. Critics claim the program used the pretense of better health and family planning for poor blacks in the South as an attempt to limit the black race. Ludwig Stupid. says some on the left grapple with Sanger's past and how to interpret her legacy. They know when she writes about human weeds, they, they know that it's that it's it's Left. repulsive. They know it's disgusting. The left will never abandon Margaret Sanger because if they do, the, she's the foundation of so many of their views. Sanger once shared her vision for a preferred race at a women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan, Stop writing it. in her autobiography. Always to me, any aroused group was a good group. Despite those views, liberals praise Sanger's work while ignoring her history. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. I am really in awe of her. Ryan Bomberger, founder of the Radiance Foundation, says abortion proponents are working to clean up Sanger's past and mm. what she stood for. They have to reinvent her every time they talk about her in mm. order to justify their celebration of her. Mm. Former Planned Parenthood director Abby Johnson says those inside the abortion industry are trained to overlook Sanger's racist views. They give you an answer like, well, I mean... Yes, Margaret Sanger was, was a racist, but everybody was a racist back then. You accept it because she is your hero, and she has to be your hero. You cannot question Planned Parenthood. In 1997, Stephen Mosher of the Population Research Institute wrote about the push to repackage Margaret Sanger in the Wall Street Journal. The reason I call it the repackaging of Margaret Sanger is because after uh, the Nazi regime destroyed the legitimacy of eugenics forever, uh, they then went back and said, oh, she was just an early uh, feminist. She was just an early supporter of, of family planning. No, she wasn't. No, she was a supporter of of giving IQ tests to people. She was in favor of using those IQ tests to determine who should be sterilized and who should have ch children. In a, <laughs> in a time where we have the population didn't have education or the black community didn't have it, how would you use your IQ? Oh my goodness gracious. Mosher's editorial unfair. In the same piece, Esther Katz, director of NYU's Margaret Sanger Papers Project, claimed evidence revealing Sanger did not rationalize her support for birth control on racist grounds, that she never advocated genocidal policies aimed at racial, ethnic, or religious groups, and that she, in fact, believed access to birth control would benefit, not eliminate minority populations. Dr. Katz turned down our request for an interview. Mm. Although in this article, the editor as public authority interpreting Margaret Sanger, she wrote, by our current highly sensitized standards, some of her attitudes and statements can be construed as racist, elitist, ethnocentric, and not politically correct. In 1942, Margaret Sanger's American Birth Control League became Planned Parenthood, which has moved to fulfill its founders' goals, helped greatly by the Supreme Court decision in Roe versus Wade. Under the veil of secrecy and deception, 60 plus million Babies have not been born because they were aborted legally since 73. One third of that population belong to the African American community. A frightening and telling number given blacks make up only 13% of the U.S. population. Dan Gaynor of the Media Research Center says that Sanger's true mission remains alive and well throughout today's abortion industry. Look at the maps. 
see where the abortion facilities are. They are near places where people are marginalized, people are poor, people are minority, and that's their, that's their target market. Generation after generation, we have built a better world for our daughters. Because of allies in the media and academia, Gaynor also points out how speech from conservatives and others about Sanger's past, Planned Parenthood practices, and abortion is often classified as hate speech. There is nothing as close to a sacrament in the media as abortion. It is, it is a holy writ that, that abortion is protected. And anybody who comes out against it, any organization, any business, anybody, the media swarm. So does social media. Facebook's new oversight board, and this is really concerning, has four co-chairs. I mean, it's, yes, it's, they're going to be the appeals board for content. Well, one of the four oversight board is on the board of a, an abortion pro-abortion group. There's no pro-lifers. They're not there. The problem also exists on many college campuses. I remember at Harvard, they laughed when I was talking about the history of eugenics. And they said, you know, that doesn't matter. Planned Parenthood is not like it was during Margaret Sanger's days. Those who oppose her views say not true and are committed to exposing her past for future generations. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Pause, pause. Um, so I'm going to just talk about a few things that I think... I, how would I put it? I've lived long enough to know that certain things that start out bad end up working for the good of people. Um, I think of medication. I think of, of, you know, ideals, how we interpret those ideals. Now, considering that they took excerpts from her biography, it didn't seem to me like she had the Black community in her graces when she created this plant parenthood, which is which wasn't what it was called when it was first created. But it didn't seem that she had the choice. It seemed like she wanted to diminish or eradicate, as the, they put it, maybe they realized that the Black community was growing at an incredible rate. But also, um, you have to realize in those days, they, 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 the Black community, the Black race wasn't, didn't have education. They probably were just coming out of slave, you know, the slave era, and they didn't have their rights. I, I'm not very familiar with American history. I'm Nigerian, so I know my own history with regards to the British. But um, the American terrain um, is different. However, I am I am aware that even after slavery, there were things that they didn't have access to education, even banking, they couldn't vote. There were so many things that they were still considered animals in a lot of ways and their rights were not protected. So obviously if the father is lacks a proper education, his children might will definitely lack that education. They might be unaware about diseases that they might be passing, whatever was going on in that community. But it was as a result of the unfair treatment, the terrible treatment that the black race had to go through earlier on. So to say that she created a system where they were sterilizing women, because I've watched another documentary that said some women were going to these hospitals and they didn't realize that they were being sterilized. They couldn't, they, they weren't going to be able to have babies. Like these horror stories that were being told is just chaotic and painful to even think about and put into words. However, we look at it a hundred years later and we find that it's giving women the choice to say no to having unwanted children, children that they don't want or pregnancies. Now, as a person, as, as a Christian, I have never, like I said, I've never had one and I will never have one. It doesn't mean that I should hold everybody else to that standard. However, I do think that an education is very important 
I was watching the news the other day and a woman who knew her child would be born with a physical deformity, have no living stand, like poor, like she's, I think the baby's spine or what, the baby's skull didn't have their skull. So the brain was exposed and they still made this woman carry the child to full term only for that child to die because they didn't want to give her an abortion when she was told that it like and they are arresting people who are traveling out of state i just think that these these things should be has have to be very it's a very dicey situation and it's not like she was provided this woman with her deformed child it's not like she was provided access to free medical care she still had to pay for her own medication pay for her bills pay for even the emotional trauma of giving birth to a child you know is going to die like that was just inconsiderate so i believe these conversations need to be had and between both sides like i i don't want a situation i it will be it'll break my heart if people are just randomly getting pregnant and thinking, okay, yes, abortion is available, get rid of the baby, da 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 Regardless of Margaret Sanger's history and her decision to create, let's just assume someone's, so it was a racist attempt, the needle <laughs> or a drip, ivy drip was because of a, ra a racist person's intention. I'm not going to stop using the ivy drip because it has saved so many lives. It's, it's helped so many people. While the legacy, her legacy is truth, you have to say the truth about who she is and what she was and what she was. But it doesn't mean that the the ivy drip itself is useless or it's evil. No, that's not, it's not. You, The power lies in, in the usage. The power lies in the, in, in how we respect humanity. And if this situation is causing people to disrespect you, Humanity has to be looked into. We also have to look at that the statistics as to one third of the black people being the ones accessed. There's a lot that goes into a person being <laughs> aborting a child. The black community have not been at the front for, forefront of financial prowess in the United States. So that also plays a role. If you think about it, a huge percentage of young men incarcerated in the united states are black so imagine this woman thinking of how to raise their children and an absentee father household they were like oh no i don't want that stress they, they get rid of it so it's not just because it was available the 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 systemic and economic surrounding situation plays a role into the promotion of abortion with them so it's not like they were snatching them off the streets and throwing them but in a way they've created a structure where a huge amount of black people are the ones having abortions it's just uh it's it's not a difficult situation because i i made up my mind growing up and as soon as i knew what i was like no no i'm gonna do whatever i can but then again it won't be fair because i haven't faced every single circumstance on the face of this earth regarding a woman with a child or an unwanted pregnancy and it might be wanted what about people who have been raped i've heard of people who were incest you know by their fathers or relatives and they can't bring in those children into the world and to say that they have to go through so many circumstances are are being thrown back by creating laws that deny women access to medical care. It's quite unfortunate that this is her legacy, but truly, if you think about the time she was raised, how many women born in that time, living in 1923, were not racist? How many? How... how I just, I, I, I'm not in the hard habit of looking over things that I can't change. I'm just the sort of person that's, listen, this is the life that was, I'm going to be the change that I want to see. If that was who she was, it's unfortunate. All right. <laughs> this was a tough topic. Um, 
please subscribe and I look forward to doing more. On to the next.